How to Love a Teenager. Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages is a great way to figure out how best to show your child you love them no matter what their age. Hello, my name is Christina Campos. I'm founder of The Impactful Parent, and every week I give you parenting videos to help you in your parenting journey. If you have a particular topic or parenting question about your school-age child that you would like for me to address, please submit it at theimpactfulparent at gmail.com or by messaging me on social media. And all submissions are kept anonymous. The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you what they are and give you ideas for how you can apply them to your child. There are some great ideas for bringing more intentional efforts to show love to your household today. So let's get started. Gary Chapman says that there are five ways that people show love and want to be loved. And most people will gravitate to one, maybe two love languages. And still, they will also identify a little bit with each of the five different love languages as well. Knowing your love language and the love language of your loved ones is so important. <laughs> this is how you and your spouse and your kids perceive that they are loved and how love is shown also. Knowing the love languages of yourself and others will help strengthen your relationship. You will be able to communicate needs better, feel more appreciated, and make more intentional efforts to show love to each other. Now, luckily, Gary Chapman also gives kids and adults a love language quiz to discover your love language preferences. So you can take this quiz at fivelovelanguages.com slash quizzes slash love dash language. The test is free. Once you know your love language and that of your children, you'll be able to intentionally speak that language and your love will be better received. Now, something to note. Don't take the test yourself and then just assume you already know the love languages of your children. Instead, please have the child take the test also. Don't make assumptions about anyone's love language, really, and even your own. Take the exam because although many people tend to show love the way that they want to receive love, we naturally have unfair biases if we just assume. So it's important to accurately assess everyone's love language in your household. So take the test. All right, let's get into the five love languages by Gary Chapman. The first one is words of affirmation. If you are a person that loves unsolicited compliments and encouragement, then this could be your love language. This child thrives on approval and praise. Sometimes these kids are people pleasers and need you to acknowledge them and their efforts and their victories. If you have a child with words of affirmation as their love language, here are some ideas for intentionally showing this child that you love them. The first, ask your child if they are working toward anything. Do they have a goal? Perhaps they want an A on an exam or have a big project in school, and then start praising your child for their efforts and verbally encourage them. Two, thank your child for their good behavior. Thank yous will go a long way with this kid. Three, display your child's good work and efforts in a visible place, like a tech board or the refrigerator. Four, praise your child for a job well done whenever you can. Five, brag to others about your child when you know that your child is an earshot or will likely find out if you are talking about them. Six. Leave notes in their lunch boxes or use sticky notes to leave your child notes of encouragement, inspiration, and praise all around the house. Seven, if your child has a phone, text your child with words of encouragement. And eight, tell your child that you love them. Now the bottom line here, the pen and the spoken word is mightier than the sword. 
So what you say matters. So focus on encouragement, acknowledgement, and articulating your love verbally. The next love language, physical touch. Someone touching you means a lot if you identify with this love language. Now keep in mind that touch does not have to be sexual. Children have physical contact as their love language too. This child will need lots of hugs and kisses. But beyond hugs and kisses, how else can you show somebody with a physical touch love language that you love them? Here are some ideas. The first, give them a pat on the back when you're proud of them. Second, holding hands when you walk together or you're sitting close by. Three, dance together or take ballroom dance lessons. Four, comb your child's hair for them. Five, run your hands through your child's hair when they're talking to you or you're trying to calm them down. Six, high fives for encouragement. Seven, wrestle or play a contact sport together. And eight, give your child a massage. Now the bottom line for this love language is that this person loves it when you touch them in a caring and loving manner. If you are a parent that spanks or slaps your child, then I encourage you to reconsider your form of discipline because negative touch can be especially detrimental to a child's mental health and your relationship. The next love language is quality time. The people that resonate most with quality time need your undivided attention. They need a particular time to bond. These individuals want to feel cherished and prioritized. Spending meaningful time together is how they feel loved. Now remember that crafting quality time needs to be intentional and have some parameters. For example, no cell phones, no siblings, and no unwanted distractions. Typically, quality time is one-on-one -on -one time with the person that you love. So the following examples are ways to cultivate that one-on-one -on -one time, which is device-free and personal time with your child. Number one, read a book together. Two, go for a walk in the park. Three, cook together. Four, go on a vacation or a staycation. Five, do a fantastic one-on-one -on -one fun day with that kid. Six, start a new hobby together. Seven, ask your child specific questions about their day that require them to give more than a yes or no answer. Eight, do an activity your child chooses with them, even if you don't like it. Now, the bottom line for this love language is quality time should be one-on-one -on -one with your child above all else. It can be easy to cultivate quality time with different activities because it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you are engaged and spending time together. The hard part is putting down the phone, putting work away, and making time away from everyone else in the family. Because remember, no siblings. Your next love language is acts of service. If your love language is acts of service, you feel the most loved when someone does something for you. The old saying, actions speak louder than words, could not be more accurate than with this person whose love language is acts of service. Actions that go above and beyond help those individuals feel more love toward them. And sometimes acts of service are very helpful. Sometimes acts of service are very thoughtful. Either way, this person will appreciate your intentional efforts to do something nice for them. Here are some examples of things that you can do to show your love to a child with acts of service as their love language. Number one, 
If your child is interested in a new activity, help them explore classes to take or get them the supplies that they need. Two, if they're having a difficult time doing an activity, help them. Three, make a special breakfast for your child. Four, go with your child to do some community service together. Five, if your child is running late for school, help them by making their lunch, maybe warming up their car, emailing their teachers, or do whatever you can to take something off their plate. Six, if your child is stressed, make your child their favorite comfort food and think about what you can do to take something off that to-do list. Seven, when your child is sick, make them some special soup and put on their favorite movie. And eight, when your teenager is having a crisis, even if you know the situation is totally ridiculous, sit with your child and listen to them. The bottom line for this love language is that you need to be intentional about doing the extra stuff. Please pay attention to their needs, their wants, and their desires. Take that information and find a way to do something a little special for them. It doesn't have to be a big gesture. It must be a thoughtful gesture. And our last love language, gifts. This is the most misunderstood of the five love languages. People with this love language tend to show and receive love through gift giving. However, the misconception is that the gift has to be ex expensive. This is not the case. You can't just give any gift to a person with the gifting love language. The gift requires attention and empathy to mean something to the receiver. The meaning of the gift comes from the sentiment that the gift represents. Also, many people think that individuals with the gifting love language are materialistic and shallow. This is not necessarily the case. The meaningfulness of the gift will come from the gift's sentiment, not the cost. With this in mind, here are some things you can do to show love to a child with gifts as their love language. Number one, send flowers for no reason, only just to say I love you. Two, buying your child their favorite snack and putting it in their lunchbox. Three, buying tickets to their favorite music artist, musician, or anime event. Four, surprise donuts for breakfast. Five, a note in your child's lunchbox or even a note mailed through the U.S. Postal Office. Six, Gift your child with a photograph of a special moment. Seven, give a handmade gift to show your child that you care. And eight, buy or create a special one-of-a-kind gift. Now the bottom line for this love language is that your gift should be sentimental and unique in some way. Again, this isn't about the cost of the present, but more about the meaning the gift represents. Those are Gary Chapman's five love languages and my personal examples of how to implement love languages into your home. When you know your loved one's love language, you can speak to their heart in ways that you could not before. I challenge you to discover your child's love language intentionally show your child how much you care for them by speaking to them in ways that will be meaningful to them. Because you could do this. I know you can. If this information was valuable for you today, become a more impactful parent by downloading the Impactful Parent app. The Impactful Parent app is free and full of episodes just like this one that are going to help you in your parenting journey. Because investing in your family looks like discovering new parenting techniques to make your parenting more effective and joining a community of like-minded parents that just want to be the best that they can for their kid. All of this plus so much more can be found inside the app. So download it today.
You got nothing to lose because it's absolutely free to download. So go to your app store or theimpactfulparent.com and download the Impactful Parent app. (laughs) It's that easy. So learn how to step up your parenting game and become a more impactful parent. But until next time, you got this. I'm just here to help.